Being a conductor of two symphony orchestras on two different continents, what similarities and differences do you notice between the appreciation and integration of classical music here in the United States and abroad? Well, that's a very broad question. You know, obviously I've been in South Bend for 20 plus years and also in the United States. But I have been really fortunate that to, uh, I have a, and I still I have a lot of opportunity to be the guest conductor in Europe, in Asia particularly. And also I have been music director of uh, Hong Kong Sinfonietta, which is uh, a symphony orchestra too. So to answer your question that, uh, yes, there are a lot of differences, but also there's something similar. I think uh, one, the main thing similar is the, 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 the quality, the things you demand mm -hmm. for your music, to me, should be the same. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, whether it's Europe or Asia or United States, as long as you're playing the classical music, and that, that means from Beethoven to uh, to Rachmaninoff or to John Adams, they all considered serious classical music. I think uh, as a conductor, I try my best uh, to to push the same standard. But however, uh, each country is very different. And first of all, the way orchestra runs different. In uh, United States, uh, we uh, demand a lot on the efficiency means we use much less rehearsal time. And uh, in West Europe, sometimes like that too. And in South Bend Symphony, a, a typical classical masterwork concert, we, we, we use four rehearsals each time, two or 30 minutes. But, but in Asia, we had the luxury to have uh, six rehearsals, or sometimes eight rehearsals, double the time. And then also in some uh, East European countries, such as Poland, uh, Czech Republic, also a lot more time. Western Europe, uh, sometimes similar to America, but in certain countries like uh, London, uh, England, London is not a country, I'm sorry. Oh, they e even cut shorter. A concert can be with two rehearsals. And if you say, I can, uh, I can do it with one rehearsal, oh, I prefer that way. <laughs> uh, one because uh, you know they it's expensive place, and that the other uh, reason is because simply because uh, they have a very good musicianship there. So this is the first difference. So I have to develop different strategies with a different uh, time schedule, with more time and I can rehearse more and all kinds of things. Then uh, the other uh, difference is the audience. And uh, so when you go uh, to different countries, uh, your programming need to be suitable for the audience. And uh, so in, in certain European country, I think I can afford to do quite uh, innovative programming, sometimes can be very cutting edge, quite contemporary, particularly if I had chance to guest conduct in France. Paris particularly. Paris is a very special city. They have a group of audience and musicians. Sometimes can be a musician, audience, audience, musician. They say, you know, today I'm the musician on stage, tomorrow I'm the audience. They have a big group. So, and so there I can program a, a lot, you know, things like John Cage, uh, Pierre Boulez. But however, in the state, I, sometimes I, in South Bend, I do uh, innovative program, expose audience to some new piece, but I try always have a sandwich that new piece along with something they feel comfortable. And uh, you need to have a few, uh, some piece they feel comfortable, familiar, they bring them into the hall. Uh, for many audience, if they see everything's unfamiliar, they, that, that maybe is a no for them, say, oh, well, I may not buy ticket. So th that's also the, uh, also the difference. And to, to the audience in China and Asia, I think they are still developing. And uh, so I do a lot of uh, romantic music there too. 
And so, so uh, to answer your question again, that uh, in different countries and with different orchestra, because of the economic situation, because of the, uh, how efficient musician can, can master the music, uh, because of the, their market audience, I do use different strategies, but however, standard is only one, and for the best quality. Great. Um, well, I guess we'll move on. I don't have any I hope, questions. To I hope that that was a good uh, answer for you. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, maybe actually talk more about why do you think the United States um, and parts of Asia, why do you think they need more of that familiar music, whereas in many European countries, they're a little more, for lack of a better term, curious about new music? I think, uh, let's say between the United States and the uh, many European countries, uh, the, the fundamental difference is uh, in our education system, that they have a much more uh, classical music or class uh, fine arts in general, not only music, painting and Shakespeare, many, many things, so-called serious uh, arts uh, versus the pop arts, and a lot of more into the education system. And then even before that, uh, as a baby, <laughs> as a family, uh, average speaking, uh, European countries tend to push more of that type of arts to their children. And, and so, uh, in general, they, uh, 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 they are people and uh, grew up with an environment that they, they, they can hear more, they have more. So they have a quite high sophistication to absorb different type of things. And then in this country, I must say we do have a good supporter for classical music, but I must say that we do not have enough uh, classical music or classical arts in general uh, in family, in school system, due to all the reasons that we might <laughs> have time to, to discuss this. Mm -hmm. And we must uh, understand that actually in big part of Europe, uh, so far, the classical music and serious arts is very much uh, supported by the government. Yeah, the government uh, subsidized a lot of those uh, programs uh, into the school, and also they, they pay a big part of budget f for those national symphony orchestras. But in the United States, uh, our funding for classical music or serious arts, um, a majority of them actually have been from private sector. And if I, I, I want to point out one thing to you, uh, we are the only uh, industrial country that do not have a uh, the culture department in the high level of the, uh, of the government. Every other country they have a culture ministry and with the culture ministers. Look at our uh, <laughs> government. Mm -hmm. We do not have a secretary of a culture. The, the highest level of culture department is a national endowment for the arts. And the budget, be, the budget has been cut almost every other year. And I think uh, uh, I wouldn't to blame on any particular person. I believed the early, uh, you know, uh, when the, the country is established, uh, the leaders then uh, have this idea that uh, sh uh, should let people decide, not government decide. But I think they didn't realize that. Uh, the arts have two part of kind of arts. One type of arts people can decide is a c commercial arts. And you let, uh, let the market decide. Like commercial art means pop music and a lot of uh, move, big part of movie but not, probably not the documentary type. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, in a big part of Hollywood, in a big part of pop dance, pop artists, pop singing, that type. But however, the serious arts, like uh, serious arts, like uh, classical music or, or other things, uh, and, and need to be supported by government. 
and uh, which is a, f a factor that in big part of Europe and big part of Asia too. And uh, so the problem you you throw these things into the market, then 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 you we already see the result and uh, uh, get less and less and less and. So come back to, to your question that uh, the differences between Europe and here, uh, I think is rooted in family, rooted in the school system. And then the third one is uh, the fundamental difference. They have a strongly, uh, sponsor, a strong, very strong sponsorship or uh, the budget from government they subsidize that, that budget of a, a museum and symphony orchestra, ballet, opera. But we, in this country, even Washington DC, the National Symphony Orchestra, I think 80-90% uh, of their budget is from private donation, not from national government. Or they, we call them some National Symphony Orchestra in Washington DC. <laughs> but in any other country, if you call National Symphony Orchestra, you're if it's not 100%, at least 80, 90% of budget from government. That give you assurance that you can, uh, you do not always have to go, uh, go to what market you want. Every once in a while you could go, you can explore something market may not realize it's good now, but tomorrow they may realize. Because arts, uh, uh, you know, classical music or se uh, serious arts is such thing that we are with a mission. Uh, we are pioneer for the future. Even Beethoven during his time, many people didn't like him. And the Stravinsky, the famous uh, uh, Russian composer, uh, everybody know his story uh, with his uh, uh, Rite of Spring. During the time of the uh, 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 premiere of the piece, actually audience hated it. And because they didn't understand the music, it took us a bit while and later it became, became masterpiece. So I feel that we do need strong government support to develop our, our Beethoven today or our Beethoven tomorrow, our Stravinsky tomorrow. And so maybe this, <laughs> I've gone a bit too far away, but see this is the difference between Europe and America. Okay. Um. I think I'm going to pause the